Matthew chapter 13. Let's do it. Let's start by discussing um, the parables that he tells. It's a, it's a chapter full of parables. Um, he's sitting by a lake, crowds gather around Jesus, and he tells them a parable starting with the farmer selling the, the seeds. <laughs> Sowing <laughs> um, seeds, yes. yes. Such an important parable. Yeah. Um, before we get to the actual parable, though, well, part of the, part of it, um, it's curious to me that the parable is about seeds that fall out of the farmer's grass, not the ones he planted. Do you know why that would be? It's like... The seeds that dropped, what, how does it say it? Well, that's just As he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path. On the wayside. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I missed this. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I read it wrong. Yeah. That was just the first one. Yeah. As he fell, some scattered, the birds came and ate it. Yeah. But no, all of them. Some fell on rocky places. Yeah. Other seeds fell among thorns. Yeah. Still other seeds fell on good stuff. They all f- fell. Yeah, because he's casting the seeds. Oh. Yeah, it means he cast it and it fell. Oh. So he's just giving oh, the okay. illustration that when you speak words, they will fall on different ears, different hearts. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, it doesn't... I would. I was going to ask you what each thing means, but then he goes and he explains says it himself. what they mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because his disciples are so unable to hear yeah. that they're like, tell us the meaning of this. <laughs> well... I guess it was confusing to me why it what he means by the word. So he says some fall on rocky places. That's because that describes someone who hears the word, receives it with joy, but the trouble causes them to fall away quickly. Yeah. Here's the word. Yeah. And then it's um, they fall among thorns. That's when people hear the word, but yeah. worries of life choke the word and make it unfruitful. Good soil, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So hearing the word. Yeah. When he's speaking the truth, that's my, he said, my words are truth. Where my words that? are spirit. He says it in John. Okay. So when he speaks and when his apostles speak and when you speak mm-hmm. to friends who don't know him and you say, well, I believe that he resurrected and I believe that he came back to life. That's speaking the mm-hmm. word of the truth of the gospel. Mm-hmm. And, and then what happens to those words? And he gives you those four examples. I see. Yeah. And the, and the examples are really profound because the yeah. first one is Satan. At that time, Satan was active. He just gobbles up. Yeah. Gobble, gobble. <laughs> <laughs> All the words. <laughs> I got to get that in there. <laughs> the gobble, gobble, gobble. Got to get the gobbling up. <laughs> I actually oh see a seed go into that narrow <laughs> lower jaw. Gobble, 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 gobble. It's like a cartoon. All right, and then, but did you notice what he says? And the second uh, soil. Rocky places. Yes. Yeah. He, he says it's received. It's received yeah. with so, joy. Yeah, and so yeah. It, it, it starts to grow. So these are the yeah. people who go to revivals and have an emotional experience. Yeah. But what is the thing that happens? They The trouble, trouble and whatever causes them to fall yeah. away quickly. Right. And in that one, it's that they, the, uh, it's the, um, was that the rocky soil? That's rocky soil. Yeah. There's rocky no places. root for them to take root. Yeah. So, that, so, and this the is soil the, was shallow. Yeah. It's shallow. So that the sun torches them. Right. But they did believe, mm-hmm. you know? And so evangelicals will say, we had so many people come to faith. Yeah. And and the scripture plainly shows that's just the beginning. Uh-huh. You got to grow, you know, and you got to stay in and build roots downward, uh-huh. which produces fruit upward. The uh-huh. first one, because of the words offense, uh-huh. they couldn't get below it. There was something in his words that offended them. Like, which, what are in his words that offend people today? You got to believe on him. Mm-hmm. That's offensive to them. Mm-hmm. So they did, they're, off they go. Mm-hmm. And then the third ground, it's cast and they receive it. And, but the cares and riches of the world choke it out. So the, the, that's what happens to us. We get, and the cares seem to be what happens with people in poverty. They have a lot of care with the world making their bills yeah. and the riches are the opposite. Oh. And it chokes out that word that they once received joyously. Yeah. 
And then he gets to the final point. It falls on good heart soil and it takes good root and it grows up and it produces multiple fruit, which is love. Yeah. And that's what scripture says. And so when you start to then produce that love, you can see that you're truly his disciple. Hmm. Sorry to rant on that, but it's one no. of my favorite parables. Well, I, yeah, I mean, it's incredible, obviously. And the, the thing I, maybe it kind of bothered me that it feel it at some point he says it's based on like an understanding. The word is understanding. Yeah, they, they understood, understood the yeah. word. Yeah. And it's like, I feel like there is some sort of like determination of people that can understand it. In that day, there could have been. Even now. It may be, but what is the determinant factor is what you have to ask. I, I don't know. I just, I constantly am faced with feeling like the propensities of the first three, the rocky places. We all do. That... Everybody does. And so it's a you will hear and take root and grow and produce fruit if you have a desire for it if you love the light more than the dark if you really want to know if you want to and if you don't it's okay because he's like okay you know you just that's you're not going to produce the fruit that god wants from his children yeah yeah so it's it's really it really this life reveals our hearts but I just can't, I just feel like our hearts are a little bit prescribed. There are things that people just want from the get. Yeah. People want darkness. People want. Yeah. And Jesus says that they love the darkness more than the light. But it's like he made them that way. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Romans chapter one tells us we are all without excuse because the very heavens declare the glory of God. Yeah. You walk outside, you may say, well, I want to party and I don't care about God. But you look at the immensity of space and it says to you in your heart, I think someone made this. I think that someone is bigger than me or, and you turn a blind eye to it. But in the end, you are responsible. Now, everybody comes up with different obstacles in their life to prohibit them from uh, fully going forward and embracing some more than others. And I think God will take all that into account. If someone comes up and says, I genetically just wasn't predisposed to believing, they'll say, okay, let's just scratch that off and let's look at you as if that wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You still wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. We get what we want. We are who we are, but he calls to all. In that day, some may have been prescribed to hear mm -hmm. because they were gonna be the bride that was chosen. But in our day, he is calling to all and those who choose will do it. The problem is, is we love our lives. We love our sin. We love our lives. We love this world. We, and we love it more than walking by what's called faith, which is hard. And so people make the choice. Mm. It's a daily choice, you know, mm. but for me, you don't seem convinced <laughs> or you reflect it. Well, I just, I'm just reflective like you sometimes I know this is like to help paint the picture of your story but you'll describe yourself as <clears throat> like loving sin and loving God from the start yeah. and like there just are a lot of people who don't love God from the start yeah but including myself there's a lot of people who don't love God uh from the start who come to love God yeah just I don't know so you'd have to ask yourself why don't you that's the question is it intellectualism? Is it an independent mind that thinks it's foolishness? Do you not want to put the work in? Or do you just not believe? Now, let me just give you some good news here. You don't have to be me to be pleasing to God. I'm a, I'm a different person. They're like, you know, it's just, and because I'm your dad doesn't mean that you should follow my path. God so loved the world and so in that he loves everybody and he loves people who aren't like crazy for him the way I am. But if you live your life honestly and you pursue and you realize in the scope of your existence, this is but a breath, mm -hmm. then it seems like you would even logically just say, well, what else is there? Mm 
Mm -hmm. And when you logically say what else is there, that's a desire to pursue whatever that is, mm -hmm. either to disprove it or, or prove it, but to pursue it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people won't even pursue. So the question is, are you willing to even pursue? If you're not, then you have to step back further and you mm -hmm. have to say, why don't you want to pursue? And if you don't, you have that right. Yeah, maybe it's kind of in line with like the conversation we've been having outside of this which is like if the world's getting better and worse mm -hmm. and you've argued a little bit that it's getting better and that's where i feel like it's not getting better is that we don't have this immediate access to reality that says like the earth is terrifying and scary and vast and all these things that make you realize god's there there's like a lot of infrastructure and systems and things that make it feel like God is out of the question now or something. Do you know what I mean? Like we're not in touch with nature. Or... I do. I do. But there are seven things that the scripture, which I trust, says everybody is influenced by. Mm -hmm. Conscience is one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you could say, well, that's a product of parenting. Perhaps. Nature is one. The scripture is another. The witnesses of people who believe is another. Mm -hmm. And all of those, and I can't remember all seven, but they all lend to providing the common woman, the common man with evidences enough. And the scripture says that there is a place for everyone to believe, but they can shut that off. Mm -hmm. So it makes us all responsible. The other thing factor with it is that you just don't suddenly get filled with the desire to believe. You make a step into the dark and you say, I want to test this. And then as that thing starts to enlighten you, you do, you go further and you go further. Mm -hmm. And it's almost always this give and take. He's calling you and you say, well, I'm, I'm sensing I should pursue something. You start it and then more comes mm -hmm. and you pursue and more and back and forth and back and forth. That's really how it works. And that's how the scripture describes it. Mm -hmm. So it's not a magical single event of personality, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. The, uh, yeah, it's all tied up with the idea of like rewards and stuff later too. That kind of gets to me. Well, it, it, it kind of is in the old in the Old Testament and in the biblical sense. But in the age of fulfillment, you know, I, I wonder about the reward because if you're gonna be like Christ and that's your king and you wanna be like him and follow him, then it seems to me like your call on your life is to be a servant. And it's quite possible that the people who are living, basking in the light of what he accomplished for them for their sin, will go to a place that they enjoy. And, and, and they might just like that place and that environment and that community. And I believe that. I really think God is not out to punish. He's out because he loved the world. So his son took care of everything and people who love art and music and parties and family they get their reward you know they get what they want and but i want you may not want and i want i've been wanting to tell this to you and my other two daughters that you don't have to be me you be who you are honestly before him and if you want him in your life this much or that much you can do it you don't have to pursue this because he loves you unconditionally he he takes you as you are and I believe that he will give you what you want. And, uh, and, that, and I want to be in his presence and I wanna be a servant to the lost. Here, I wish I could get in the prisons and I wish I could just provide for my family and be in the prisons because that's what I want. Well, I'm, I'm thinking probably if the future is like, like that, then I will go to a place where he will send me out to the people in the prisons of dark. You know, I like those people. I want to reach them. I feel like, so I, whatever is you are and whatever you desire and want to be and do, you've got to do it. Life is a gift. And if it's not a hundred percent God, religion, Jesus, like your dad, it's okay. Do you think that you've like grown to love reaching the lost? 
or has that just been it's a always part been part of, of my you? makeup yeah that's my makeup there wasn't like a part of you that loved all the other stuff as much as it uh, here's the thing I we probably won't even get through this sorry no I don't even want to get through it this is this chapter. is more important I uh, um, frankly I love this world yeah I love this world more than I uh, am attracted to God mm -hmm. I love music food sex drugs rock and roll fighting film I love this world but in light of what I believe he has done for me because of my love for this world, I feel a responsibility to choose to make him my mm. focus. So don't mistake it. I love the world. I will miss this world. I'll miss Don Jose's. <laughs> I mean, that's a Mexican restaurant in Huntington that we love. I will die not having chips and salsa. <laughs> you know, and big waves, you know, I'll die, you know, having lots of women. I'll die having, not having, but that's where love comes in is when it's sacrificial. When I say, God, I put that aside because I love you more yeah. and I love you more because of what you've done. And that's how it works in me. You see? Well, it helps to hear that as your daughter. Cause like. I relate to that. Yeah. And like, it's hard in this, like, whatever, it's getting too personal, but like being s single or, you know, and like having to choose to like be a servant yeah. before that stuff has come is like really frustrating. Really brutal. But, yeah. Like, it helps to hear, because I know you love serving the lost and these things, and I can't help it like the language gets confused with me sometimes because you think like that's all you want to do and mm -hmm. like you're our father you're also our pastor so it gets confused like is that what i'm you know the supposed human side to of me. yeah but also like i just think i know the human side but i i only see or care about the side that loves the mm -hmm. that wants to go out to the loss and mm -hmm. love god and i it seems like the love for the world isn't there almost. Mm. I don't know why I read it like that, but it it seems like you've like, it's like not there anymore at least. That's it's what I'm died wondering. greatly. It's died greatly, but I still love it. I mean, I still, that my flesh love, I'm here. That, so that's kind of what I'm asking. Like you, do you think that your pursuit of godly things is what, like has like enhanced your love and like want to serve the lost more well it's than made me other. better it's made me yeah because what happens is i see over time in the process of the seed growing and taking root deeper yeah and starting to mature you start to be able to mature and see that the lost are lost because of this damn world yeah, yeah and you start to get angry at what the world does to people I see. So even though I, in my flesh, love it, yeah. I don't respect the purveyors of world sway that capture people. Mm -hmm. You get it? Yeah. So it's it's a conflict, and you're always in it. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And you think, so you're saying the seed, do you think you can, like, transition in these types of seeds that, yeah. like, you kind of go from... Sometimes I read something in the word that offends me and I think, you know, I don't know if I really believe this, you know, and so I could walk away. Sometimes the cares of the world, the riches haven't really bogged me down, damn it. But <laughs> <laughs> the cares of the world bog you down. The deceitfulness of wealth. Deceitfulness of wealth and riches. Yeah, you look at everywhere you look, that they are heralded as living the life. Yeah. Yeah. And like having done good. Yes. As they've made it. It's right. really backward. Right. But all we have to do, and this is why I, I petition for the value of this word, is because it shows you if you believe God himself took on flesh, how he lived. And that's telling us what's important in life and him serving and giving his life and, and not having a place to rest his head. And then the indictment on living for riches mm -hmm. because it is for here and now. 
people of faith trust that there's something more. It's not necessarily a reward. I would be miserable if I wasn't working. So I think in my soul, you know, I think the hell is gonna be for people who love the luxury here and die and realize that's not a luxurious place anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, good stuff. This is, is good stuff. Good. Yeah, this is such a long chapter. That's oh, it's insane. Of, Stick our time. Yeah, it might be a couple episodes, but we have. Oh my gosh, yeah, we're at twenty minutes. Yeah, right now. <laughs> we haven't even gone through a few verses. So you got to hear about one of the best Mexican restaurants <laughs> in Huntington Beach. And watch me cry. And watch Del cry. Thank and you. watch me rant. All right, on to the next.